Hey guys, we're going to go over lesson number three. So on number one, it says write the sum as a mixed number. So it's saying eight twelfths plus six twelfths equals fourteen twelfths, which we agree. Now it says fourteen twelfths equals twelve twelfths plus how many twelfths? So no matter what, if you look on the bottom number is your denominator. I'm going to put a D. The top number on a fraction is called the numerator. So if you look, the denominator is twelfths. It does not change. So we know that our answer will be twelfths. Now, we know that 8 and 6 is 14. So when you add your numerators together, that's what got me this 14 total. This 14 is the total here, but 12 plus what number will get me to 14? Well, we know 12 plus 2. So that will be my numerator. So 14 twelfths will equal 12 twelfths plus 2 twelfths because 12 and 2 make the 14, and our 12 stay the same because we're adding the same type of fraction. So 12 twelfths plus 2 twelfths, 12 and 2 make 14. Our denominator stays 12, so 12 twelfths plus 2 twelfths equals 14 twelfths. Number 2. 65 times 28, we're going to write that vertically, so 65 times 28. I'm going to use a different colored pen so you can kind of see the way I'm traveling. So we're going to start here at the 8. 5 times 8 is 40. 6 times 8 is 48 plus that 4, which is 52. All right, I'm going to switch my colors. I'm now going to multiply with this 2. 2 times 5 is 10. Oop, I have to put that place value. I almost forgot, guys. Can't forget that place value. 2 times 5 is 10. I'm not looking at that anymore. 6 times 2 is 12, plus that 1 is 13. I'm going to end up adding these two numbers. Notice that I'm keeping my 1s, 10s, 100s, and 1000s lined up. 0 and 0 make 0. 2 and 0 is 2. 5 and 3 is 8. Bring the 1 down. So that is 1,820. Number three, 10 hundreds equals 1,000. So 10 times 100 is 1,000. 10 thousands is equal to what? 10 times 1,000. 10 thousands is equal to 10 thousands. Okay, so we'll just put 10. Thousands. That sounds a little wonky because it's saying ten thousands equal to. I guess I should probably put a comma here. So it's talking about ten thousands. All right, four. All parallelograms have exactly two sets of parallel sides. Choose the polygon that is a parallelogram. So two sets of parallel sides. Well, these two parallel sides mean that they basically go in the same direction no matter how far it goes. So if I kept drawing these lines on and on and on, they would never intersect or overlap. So these two are parallel. However, these two are not because they would actually intersect if I continued those two. So that would not be it. Um, these have parallel sides, which is correct. And these two have parallel sides. So it says to choose the polygon that is a parallelogram. So I would choose that rectangle. Now, if we look at this, these two are parallel. These two are parallel, and these two are parallel. So honestly, there's two of them. However, there aren't any lines that are parallel on this. Uh, two sets, yeah. Have, oh, wait, this says exactly two sets. So this would not be it because it actually has one, two, three sets. So this would be incorrect. So the only one would be that rectangle. Sorry. See, that's why you have to make sure you slow down and pay attention to what it says. Number five, list the first five multiples of nine. So basically, you're skip counting by nine five times. So there's nine, 18, 27, 
36 and 45. Those are the first five multiples. Number six, the chart shows the different amounts of spices by weight. Use the data in the chart to complete a pl line plot for the 10 containers. So it tells us the spice name on the top and the weight of that spice on the bottom. So when you are doing a line plot, each of these spices will have an X on this line plot. So if you look at this line plot, it goes from zero to one whole. And then they have fractions here. They have one eighth, one fourth, one half, and three fourths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start actually at salt and I'm just gonna work my way through and I'm gonna put a line through the box to let me know that I've already put that there. So salt is one fourth a pound. So you see that they have labeled this line plot with spices and it tells me that it's in pounds. So salt is one fourth. So I will put an X above one fourth and I'm marking through that. Pepper is one eighth. Put an X above one eighth, mark it out. Now when you are doing line plots, you need to try to make sure that your X's are the same size and organized. So I'm trying to line these two up. Now you can notice that one of them is a little bigger than the other. I'm trying to do my best because it is a small area for us to do this. Now cloves is one eighth, so there's another one. So you put, if you have more than one, you put them right on top another. Cinnamon is at one half. Now notice all my first X's I'm trying to keep in the same row so it's easily noticeable how many there are. Paprika is one fourth. There's a second one, so I'm gonna put it above it. Mark it out. Basil, also one fourth. Mark it out. Garlic, one half. So notice all my second X's are lined up. Oregano, one half. Mark it out. Parsley, one half. Mark it out. Sage, three fourths. Mark it out. So based on this, which one has the most, which pound of spice is the most? It would be the half a pound. And the least would be three fourths. All right, which shape has only one set of perpendicular lines? So perpendicular, you can, if you do not know, you can always look in your help pages. So let me close these pins. So I'm gonna open up. Perpendicular, right here. Perpendicular lines, lines that intersect and form a right angle. So it's almost like an upside down T. So when you put this line here and you put this line here, it both of them together make a right angle. So let's look. And there should only be one is what it says. It says only one set. So if I look here, if I were to continue these lines on, Right there is a right angle. So those two, these two do not make a right angle. These two do not make a right angle. So right there would be one set of perpendicular lines. Now this one makes two sets because right there is a perpendicular line as well. All right, let's look at this one. Right there's that T, there's a perpendicular line. So basically two lines that go together to make a 90 degree angle and only 90 degrees on each side um, these are not so that's one right there that's only one set where this one here look here there's one right angle two three four right angles so that's more than one this has one two three four right angles as well so that would not work either so there's only one and that is a that right triangle number eight marco and his brother divided a, that's a key word there, divided a 14-foot rope into four equal sections for a project. How many inches was each piece of rope? So we're doing 14 divided by four. So if they divided that, how many inches? Ooh, key words here. So it's a 14-foot rope, but I wanna know how many inches was each piece. So what we really need to do is see we know that's a total of 14 feet, but we need to see a total of inches. So how many inches are in a foot? If you don't know, that is something that is in your help pages. There's a section that has some measurements on it. Let's look right. right here. So one foot is 12 inches. So in order to find out how many inches are in that 14 feet, we would do 14 times 12. 
I use the two different colored pens. Four times two is eight. One times two is two. Use a different one. Put in that place value zero. Holds it place. One times four is four. One times one is one. Add them together. Eight, six, and one. So it's 168 inches of rope that we have. So if they do it into four equal sections, we are dividing this 168 into four sections. So that's division. So this is a two-step problem. So we are going to take 168 and we will divide it into that four. I cannot divide four into one, so we'll look at the next place value. I can do four into 16. So if you don't know automatically, just start skip counting. Four, eight, 12, 16. That took one, two, three, four times. Four times four is 16. Subtract those two at zero. Bring down that eight. Four into eight is two. Two times four is eight. And you have none remaining. So there's 42. 42 what? 42 dogs, 42 pieces of rope, 42 books, 42 what? So you have to label that measurement. So the question was how many inches was each piece of rope? So that's what it is. 42 inches of rope. Very nice. All right, number nine, we have 3,942, and we are dividing that into six. So you start at that largest place value, which is the thousandths. I cannot put six into three, so I will do the next one. So we look at that as 39. What is six into 39? If you don't know, automatically start skip counting. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. Well, I'm going to stop at 42 because that's too much. That's more than 39. So I will do 36. How many times did we have to skip count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 times, and 6 times 6 was that 36. Subtract. 9 minus 6 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. I'm not going to put anything there. Bring down this 4. How many times will 6 go into 34? Well, we can use this. 36 is too much. So we'll do 30. So how many times did it take me to skip count to get to 30? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 6 was 30. Subtract. 4 minus 0 is 4. 3 minus 3 is 0. Bring down that 2. How many times will 6 go into 42? Well, look there. Perfect. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. 7 times 6 was 42. Subtract and you get 0. No more numbers to divide into. So 3,942 divided by 6 is 657. Very nice. All right, number 10. Angles are measured in... So if you remember, we talked about that little symbol that we put um, beside the numbers that are in angles measurement. We call those degrees. So for example, if I was saying 10 degrees, like number 10, it would be 10, and there's a little circle at the top. It has to be a very small circle, and it goes towards the top of the number, not in the middle, not at the bottom, it goes at the very top. Number 11, identify the pattern by stating the rule. 12, 24, 48, 96, 192. So if you notice, our numbers are getting larger, so we're not, no, we're adding something to it. So to go from 12 to 24, how much does it take to add to 12 to get to 24? Well, that's 12, so I'll say add 12. Well, how did I go from 24 to 48? If I Do I add 12 again? 24 and 12, let's do that off to the side, would be 36. That's not right. So what do you add to 24 to get to 48? You add 24. Hmm. So how do I go from 48 to 96? Do I add 24 again? Let's see, 48, 24, 72, no. So how do I get to 96? Well, let's look here at a pattern that we found. 12 and 12, 24 and 24. So maybe we're doubling that number. So let's see what 48 and 48 is. 48 plus 48 is 96. Ding, ding, ding. So there we go. So what we're doing is we're doubling that number. Well, let's make sure it's like that all the way across. So let's see if doubling 96 would get me to 192. So 96 plus 96. Yes, it is. So that's what we're doing. I'll put plus 96 there so I remember. So 11 is doubling 
the number, and I'm going to use the symbol for number, just use the hashtag symbol, it's easier. All right, number 12, choose the sign that makes the sentence in the box true. So we're going to say greater than, less than, or equal to. So let's go ahead and look. 12 twelfths is greater than, less than, or equal to 11 twelfths. I'll remember the top number on a fraction is the numerator, so I'm putting an N. The bottom number on a fraction is called the denominator. My denominators are the same size, so I'm not, I know I'm dealing with the same size pieces. But would 12 twelfths be more, or less, or the same as 11 twelfths? Well, I know 12 is more than 11, so this would be greater. So my symbol would be this. So you would say this as 12 twelfths is greater than 11 twelfths. All right, let's do 13. Write 64,349 in expanded form. What is expanded form? Let's go in here and see if we can find something in our help pages. Expanded form, here we go. Expanded form, that is in decimals. See if we can find expanded form in whole numbers. If not, then I'll show you what it is. And maybe we can add that into our help pages in case you do get that. So I do not believe we have expanded form in whole numbers. Nope. So let's add. So expanded form is expanding each place value. And we'll actually do this one on this page. So we needed to expand 64,349. 64,349. So you expand the largest, or I always start with the largest place value. So the largest place value is that 10 thousands. So I know that is six ten thousands. So what would that whole number be? Well, that six times 10,000 would be 60,000. So if I expand that number, it would be 60,000. So we got that one. Let's do the next one. This is in the thousandths place. So this would be 4,000. Got it. This is in the hundredths place. So three of those would be 300. Check. Next one would be my tens place. Four tens is 40. And then in my ones place, I have nine, and nine ones is nine. So this is what the expanded form of 64,349 would be. I'm putting this on my back page of my help pages so I can look at it later if I need it. So I'm actually just going to transfer this answer over into my box. So 60,000. Now notice I put that comma in there to separate my hundreds and my thousand. Plus, and you always are adding these, plus 4,000. Notice I put the comma between the hundreds and the thousand. Plus 300, plus 40, plus 9, and I'm going to put that equal sign, which will equal 64,349. Wow, that's a big, big addition problem. All right, let's do 14. If one tablespoon is three teaspoons, then two tablespoons would be what? Well, if I know one tablespoon equals three teaspoons, but now they want to know two tablespoons would equal what? So it's basically saying one times two is two, so three times two would be six. So two tablespoons would be six teaspoons because they doubled the tablespoons, so I would double the teaspoons. So two tablespoons equals six teaspoons. The perimeter of this rectangle is 32 centimeters. The width is given. Find the length. Remember, well, excuse me, remember to label your answer. So when I think of the word perimeter, I find the word rim. So when you're talking about the rim of something, it's only the outside portion. So I'm only adding together the outsides. So I know put the perimeter of this will equal 32 centimeters. Well, in a rectangle, if this side is four centimeters, then this side right here is also four centimeters. So I need to find my two lengths. So I know that this is four and this is four. So those two lengths together equal eight, because four plus four is eight. So let's subtract 
that 8 from 32. Well, 32 minus 2 would get me to 30. That would be 6 more. 30 minus 6 would be 24. So I know 24 would be what these two sides together would be, but I need to know them individually. Well, I know this side and this side will be the same exact length, so I would divide this by 2. So what is 24 divided by 2? Well, what number doubled will get you to 24? That would be 12. So this would be 12 and this would be 12. Well, 12 what? 12 feet, 12 inches, 12 signs, 12 flags. Make sure you label the measurement. So I know this is centimeters, so this will be centimeters as well. So 12 centimeters, and I'm going to circle it. All right, guys, that is, oh, I can't talk. All right, guys, that is lesson three of Simple Solutions. Thank you.